Hi everyone, I'm Andrew. I'm Giacomo. We are the makers of Tadpole Tales, and welcome to Pina and the Lost Voice Devlog, an adventure platformer where you play as a tiny dog that punches with his voice in a 2D hand-drawn whimsical world where the sun and the moon have stopped moving. We have a Steam page open, it would really mean a lot if you could give us a wish list, but anyways, let's get on with the devlog. For starters, I've been reworking on the basic combat system for the player. I added the ability for Pinny to do a downwards bark attack, which is different to bark jump, because it doesn't propel the Pinny to the sky. With this, I have also separated the key bindings between special abilities, which consume stamina points, and normal melee attacks. If Pinny barks normally downwards, there should also be a force that pushes Pinny upwards if there is something below him, kind of like a pogo stick jump. And funny enough, later on I realized that this term was actually popularized by Hollow Knight. So of course I named the jump force variable Pogo Force, not to confuse with other jump forces. Now, Pini can pogo jump on top of enemies and bullets and probably also many other things that is to come. Oh, and in case you haven't noticed, Benji also added a parallax script for the background. It's still very early work in progress and there is still a lot of things missing, but I think it looks pretty good so far. I love it when I move Pinny upwards and see how the camera also gives this effect that you can see further away. I did bits of different things here and there as regards the assets of the game these past few weeks. I cleaned up some new animations such as Pinny barking down, the boar shooting, and this animation of Pinny waving a hole. I also tweaked the run animation, which used to have a lot of shadow around the bottom part of the body of Pinny. Many said it gave them the impression it was always moving the same leg back and forth, but note that there is little to no shadow there, it should look better hopefully. Apart from this Cleanups. I started thinking about different objects and hazards to place around the levels for Pinny to interact with. Here's a spiky hazard, for example, meant to be put on the ground alone or in rows. The idea is to have two variants of this, one destructible, meanwhile the other one is not. We could have some interesting challenges in which Pinny must avoid the unbreakable ones while using his bark down attack to destroy the others, just as an early idea. Other things that we're thinking of placing around the levels are bushes, boxes or piles of leaves that get destroyed when Pinny barks at them, possibly revealing interesting objects or collectibles when this happens. We have started brainstorming ideas for the first boss of the game, since having a boss fight at this stage would be very useful for us to test out the maneuvering and offensive abilities of Pinny. For now, I made this idle animation to test his size and movement in Unity. His name is Tubagut, and he can appear to be very calm and peaceful at first, but be aware of what he's capable of doing if he gets provoked too much. Finally, I did some work on the VFX, even though things are still pretty rough for now. For example, here's a smoke cloud that appears when Pinny lands on the ground. This one is for when Pinny starts to run, and then there is this shrinking cloud that we could use as a party hole for when Pinny or the other characters are in the run cycle. Regarding pairing, I want to thank each and every one of you who's been giving us valuable feedback, big or small. This opened a lot of windows for discussion and creativity, and it honestly is the main reason why we wanted to start this YouTube series. I want to thank you all again for the input, everyone was so kind, and we both appreciate it so much. And like I said, if you wish to support us further, please consider to wishlist the game on Steam, as it really goes a long way, and it can really help us turn this game into a reality. Link in the description. But anyways, let's get back to pairing prototypes. So first off, I started prototyping the one that would go right back to where it came from, kind of like a passing ball mechanic. Code-wise, I simply just inverted the direction when the bullet touched the melee colliders. And whilst it was cool to see that the bullets are going back to the enemy, it already feels like there's a lot less things that you can do as a player with this mechanic. Also, the only skill that is required is to just hit the bullet at the right time, leaving the difficulty to be based on the bullet size, speed and timing. Another problem is that if Pini goes in a weird direction and hits the bullet, the parried direction does not correlate with where Pini is looking and it kind of looks weird. One way maybe we could fix it is by turning this mechanic into a more aim assist like mechanic to check that only if Pini is looking at the enemy, then make it parry towards the enemy, otherwise ignore it. And at this point, I think both Jaco and I, we came to a sad realization that this might not be a good idea, which really gave us a kick into a reality. The more we elaborated, the more complex this basic attack got, we realized that we really shouldn't move towards this. If there's anything that we learned from starting game development, is that we should always keep the core mechanics as simple as possible. Not to mention that this aim assist feature actually could take away meaningful player choice. It also complicates the code structure of combat. Keeping things simple can help us develop this game further, so we decided to put this on a hold for now and go to the second prototype. In the second prototype, Pini can parry in four directions, 
which are on the x-axis and y-axis. While doing this, of course it can lead to Pini not hitting the enemies back consistently, but this opens so many opportunities for puzzles, extra layers of mastery, which we both think is a good call. With this, there is also an animation advantage for Giacomo, as Giacomo can now animate the exact climax of the parrying bullet animation, and I can link that using an event in the animator to spawn the parried bullet at that exact frame. And programming-wise, I made an enum that detects what direction is Pini barking towards, and then that direction is passed to the bullet to go towards that specific direction. I really like these because the rules that we have set are simple and clear to understand. There are fewer restrictions to having an aim assist or auto aim, a lot fewer things to consider, but of course that is not to say that we don't want to keep this option open. I can totally see the aim assist would be something really cool to be used in bosses or any other special occasions, so we will definitely keep that in mind. So here's the look of the final result, what do you guys think? And with that, I actually have a game design question for you. Tell me, should Pini be able to parry his own bullet? If so, why? Or why not? Could this simple mechanic be game breaking? Something that kept me quite busy recently were the key arts of the game. We are currently preparing a pitch deck, and we needed a couple of artworks that could showcase what the game is about well enough. As references, I gathered some examples from different games that had a similar composition to what I wanted to make. I really like this idea of showing the characters and background pieces placed on a sphere, or just half of a sphere. And as you probably already know, our game is set on a tiny planet, so the concept matches with it pretty well. Also, like this Celeste key art. The intention was to make something that could be easily adapted to the size of the different burners we would need for platforms such as Steam. In this way, the background can be cut and the artworks of the characters can be placed around without too much hustle. I did some tests, experimenting with what the background should look like, as you can see here. I also tried different placements and poses of the characters, especially Pinny. In the end, we decided to go for a pose of Pinny doing a bark punch attack, to make it clear from the first glance what our doggo is capable of doing. The look of the bark punch itself is not final, but in terms of size and placement in the artwork, it won't change too much, I suppose. While working on the variation of that key art, I sketched this other option too. It was too different to be used for the same purpose, but at the same time, it felt a bit of a wasted opportunity to not have something like this too. And so there you go, we now have a second key art that shows the planet of Pinny in all its Roundness. As you can see, these artworks show some new phases we haven't introduced to you yet. We can't wait to talk a bit more about them in the future. Like Giacomo said, for the past two months we've been working really hard on this pitch deck. I'm so happy of how it turned out and again, it's all thanks to the amazing friends and mentors that we have that have helped us make this pitch deck come true. It was through a bunch of iterations that really made this deck wonderful, so thank you all so much. Now in my life, I recently contracted COVID, so that's not fun. It hit me really hard and I couldn't really work at all for a week. It was pretty weird losing my taste, but I'm now feeling much better. And to celebrate the recovery, my girlfriend and I went to this Korean restaurant in Bucharest called Goody Goody and had some really amazing food. I love Korean food in general and this was definitely a huge treat for me. As regards me, on the occasion of my birthday, I managed to pay a visit to my family and friends in my hometown, Rome. Due to university, work, or well, you know, a worldwide pandemic, I had to celebrate my birthday in London for the past 8 years. Not that celebrating in London is bad per se by any means, but I really missed having the chance to do it with my close ones. Speaking of things I really enjoyed recently, I finished watching the first part of the final season of Better Call Saul, and oh my god, the only thing I can say is that I can't wait for the release of the episodes of the second part. And now, it's time for a new pull. Last time you guys chose option A, which is this sketchy little wolf guy. And now we want to ask you, what color are his pants? A or B? Feel free to write in the comments below and vote on our Discord to let us know which one it is. And as usual, here we have some new amazing fan arts. Thank you so so much for making these. And that's all for this week, thank you guys so much for watching! If you enjoyed it, please consider giving us a like and subscribe to be part of our journey. You can support us by wishlisting the game on Steam, and with that being said, I wish you all a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye-bye!